UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hello and welcome to another edition of UCLA's Bruin Talk. I'm your host for the day, Javrina Sefra alongside Naomi Mania, and we have a very exciting show for you today as we take you inside UCLA Athletics. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at this week's upcoming events. And welcome back to Bruin Talk. I'd like to introduce you to our next guest, head coach of women's track and field, Jeanette Bolden, who is finishing up her 18th season with the Bruins as she has led them to three NCAA titles and 10 Pac-10 titles. She also served as the head coach for the 2008 Beijing Olympics. Thank you so much for joining us, Coach. Thank you. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. And tell me, what keeps you coming year after year back to UCLA? <laughs> Uh, I'm a Bruin, you know, I'm an alumni, and uh, I love watching young people develop. I love watching the confusion as a freshman coming into UCLA, going from their freshman year, their sophomore year, their junior year, and blossoming to a beautiful senior. And what have you enjoyed most about coaching? You know, I really like seeing people achieve their goals. You know, uh, I'm a perfectionist, so I, I really like to watch them grow and develop and achieving their goals and going on either to professional track and field or being ready for the business world is what I really like. Forrest Braden and Johnny Gray are new to the coaching staff for track and field. What have these new coaches brought to the team? Uh, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of excitement, and of course their skill and their knowledge in coaching. You know, I competed with, with Coach Gray. He ran the 800 meters on a world-class level. I was a sprinter. And so we've known each other for years and years. And he has so much charisma and so much passion and so much knowledge for the young people. I mean, he's an American record holder in 800 meters. And Coach Braden, uh, he's young, his youthfulness, his intelligence, his eagerness to, to be with the young ladies is, is just fantastic for both of them. I really enjoy working with them. And you actually competed in the Olympics in 1984. Tell yes. us a little bit about that experience and what that was like for you. Uh, being from Los Angeles, I was born and raised in Compton, California, and having the opportunity to compete in front of my friends and family was just fantastic. I mean, the Olympic Games, if you, are, are, if you can win the Olympic Games, that's great, but just being in the atmosphere was fantastic. And besides competing in the Olympic Games, you've also had the opportunity recently to go back as coach for the women's team in 2008. And how was that experience? Uh, it, it was a little bit different <laughs> <laughs> being on the coaching side of it, opposed to being an athlete. But I en enjoy, you know, being at the Olympic Games. And the United States always has fine athletes, and we, we represented greatly in the Olympic Games. And it was, it, was, it was a joy to be there, to see all the cultures, to see everyone getting together, and of course competing and, and doing well for the team. I felt like I was an athlete there. And Coach, what are some of the differences that you see between a collegiate athlete and an Olympic athlete when you were coaching? 
Uh, you know, I think the, the main difference is the time. You know, a, as an Olympic athlete, this is your job. This is what you wake up in the morning doing. You have track and field on your mind all the time. This is your job. This is your passion. As a collegiate athlete, you have to do well in school and on the field. And always having that balance between academics and athletics is, is what we stress here at UCLA. And we do it on a very, very high level. And so it's a lot of stress being involved, being a student athlete, because you have to maintain your grades. Also, you have to perform well on the field. So I think just having that time to do it is a difference between a collegiate athlete and a world-class athlete. And being head coach, you have a very large team. How do you keep them united? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I average anywhere between 55 and 64 young ladies on a team wow. on a regular basis. That is a lot of kids. It is a lot, it's, it's a lot of ladies. It's yeah. a lot of ladies. But we, we really talk about team, and it's no I in team, and we do a lot of different bonding activities. Uh, we go to the obstacle course, and uh, we do the ropes course, and we have a lot like game night where we all just play games together. So it's a lot to keep them bonded. But I have a, a, a very good group of young ladies, and they love each other, and more importantly, they love UCLA. Besides everything you've done as an athlete and a coach, you're also an active member in your community. Tell us a little bit more about how you play a role in your community and things such as Marathon for Kids that has been growing at UCLA for the last couple of years. You know, um, being from the inner city, being from Compton, California, I thought UCLA was just a dream that I saw on TV. And it's a reality for a lot of kids, and it was one a reality for me. So my goal is to bring UCLA into the inner city, to allow inner city kids to come here and say, wow, I can, I can grow and, and, and be inspired to come here one day. And Marathon Kids is a situation where we bring inner city kids anywhere between 4,000 and 6,000 kids up to Drake Stadium to experience doing a marathon. They come in October, and then they come back in March. And they, between October and March, they have to do a marathon. They have to walk or run 26 miles. And it's nice because they bring their family, they bring their friends. We talk about healthy eating. And you know, obesity is a big problem in this country. And we're getting a lot of kids to understand about fruits and vegetables and taking care of themselves. And, and a lot of student athletes come and sign autographs and cheer the young kids on. And it's just a fantastic day. I can tell you're super passionate. I, I am. What fuels that? What inspires you? You know, I, I think I just love helping people. Yeah. Whether it's little kids or the big kids, whether it's collegiate kids or world class kids. You know, I have I have ten year old twins. And my goal for them is to be inspired all the time, to inspire them and to want them to grow and develop into prominent young people where they can turn around and, and help other young people. And I, I love working with kids. I love, like I said, whether they're young kids or they're collegiate kids. I just love it. You've also recently held an event called A Chance for Children. Can you tell us a little bit more about that also? You know, I think um, homelessness is a very big problem in our country. And uh, one of our volunteer coaches uh, named Karen, and uh, she introduced us to a group of people that run a homeless shelter called Chance for Children. And uh, our team went to the homeless shelter. We collected money for the young ladies, a dollar, and uh, we bought gifts like uh, Hello Kitty dolls and blankets and backpacks. And the kids were just so grateful. I mean, it was so nice to see the kids. I mean, they range anywhere from three years old to 10 years old at this homeless shelter. And just to have them, to be with them, and to, to show that, you know, there is something else outside of what's going on and allow them to see something different, even if it's just a moment in time. So we're very, very, very happy to support Chance for Children. And this is wonderful that you're instilling this in your athletes. How do you think this translates on over to the track and field? You know, I think sometimes we get so involved in what we're doing and that's all we can see is what we're doing right there. And there, there's a world outside of athletics. So sometimes when you are just have that tunnel vision and you get a little anxious about what you're doing, you can look over to the left or the right and say, you know what, things aren't so bad. And I try to get them to understand that right now you need to focus on your goals, but there are other goals out there that you need to try to aspire to achieve in your life. And with recruiting season, what are the new recruits going to bring to the team next year? Oh, wow. We, we, we had a fantastic recruiting class. We had a great recruiting class last year, and this year uh, it's going to be even bigger and better. And I think the difference between last year and this year is a lot more balance, a lot more balance across the board and sprints and the hurdles and jumps and just elevating our whole staff so we can get back to winning our Pac-10 titles and NCAAs. 
Speaking of the new recruiting class, what attributes do you usually look for when recruiting athletes? You know, to tell you the truth, I really look at things that are not necessarily on the track all the time. Because you can read somebody's time and you can say, well, that, that's a really good person, that's a really fast person, or they can jump far or throw real far. But at the same time, I look at the character of the individual. I look to see whether or not I think that they can be someone on our track team, that they can mesh with all the other young ladies on our track team. Can they understand the, the, the um, things that they have to do here at UCLA to be a student athlete? And they have to be driven, they have to have that passion, they have to be very, very motivated. And uh, I look for things also, you know, about how long they've been running track and whether or not they really still have that passion in them. And Coach, what are some of your personal and uh, team goals for next year? To win. That's <laughs> it. Just to win, just to win, just to win. That is my one goal next year. Just win. I just like win, that. Just win, that's it. <laughs> With goals and such as winning, um, I know you're familiar with the, the pyramid of success with Coach Wooden. What are some of your personal mantras that you like to inspire your athletes with? You know, um, Coach Wooden has inspired all of us. And one thing that I take from that is that your character speaks for you in the way you carry yourself, in the way you address individuals. And that's why I stress so much to my young ladies about doing things outside of just track and field. And I talk to them about hurdles that they have to, you know, go over even in track and field or in their life. And I always say that, you know, uh, success is a journey, not necessarily a destination. Because all, all the time as athletes, you want to have that success and you want to just do it and you want to go. But it's a journey and it's a process. And you have to really have a lot of patience uh, self-awareness to go through that process and it's not your ups and your downs it's how much you rebound from your downs and coach what's uh, a typical day for your athletes oh my god that's what I want to know <laughs> oh my god a typical day okay um, well I have my middle distance groups that gets up and trains at 7 o'clock in the morning time then they have class either 9 or 10 and after class and they try to try to grab a little bit of lunch and then they have tutors and study hall, and they have to come back in the afternoon and lift weights. Then after that, they have dinner. After dinner, they have tutoring, 7, 8, 9, sometimes 10 o'clock. So if they have a little bit of time left, that's called free time. <laughs> <laughs> I know we keep bringing up that you were a gold medalist, but it's so amazing. And one question that I have in mind is, have you ever seen your athletes get starstruck, maybe the freshmen, when they first meet you as being somebody that was so important to the sport? You know, not, once they get here, they're not too uh, starstruck, but in the recruiting process. I, I, I recently had a parent of a recruit, and we ended up getting the recruit. And she said, oh, coach, I'm so glad to meet you. And she gave me a hug, and she said, I Googled you and saw everything about <laughs> you. I was like, oh, my God, you Googled me. So, you know, sometimes parents and, and recruits do. But by the, by the time they get here, they're, I'm all old hat to them after that. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive. Where do you keep your gold medal? You know, believe it or not, about a year ago, I had a company to mount my, my gold medal with my picture and my certificate for winning Olympic Games. I just did it a year ago. Wow. And, yeah. <laughs> but that's still so impressive, Coach. Thank you so much for sh sharing your wise words. And uh, we all look forward to the women's uh, track and field season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, guys thank you. And if you would like additional information on women's track, you can check out more information on UCLA Bruins. Dot com. And when we come back, we're going to introduce you to the Athlete of the Week. But first, let's check out this public service announcement here on Bruin Talk. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Welcome back to Bruin Talk. Before we meet our next guests, let's take a look at this week's Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Maxwell Dice of the men's track and field team as our Student Athlete of the Week. Maxwell brought a second place finish in the 100 meter sprint and contributed to a 4 by 100 meter win. Maxwell's performances helped the Bruins edge their crosstown rival USC on the Trojans' home field. UCLA managed to capture the win in points prior to the final closing event with a final score of 89-74. to 74. Congratulations, Maxwell, and good luck to the rest of the team. 
If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at www.uclabruins.com. And now we're very pleased to introduce you to assistant coach of the men's tennis team, Chris Quinta, who's entering his fourth season with the Bruins. And in 2005, he actually helped lead the Bruins to their first title, NCAA title, in, since 1984. He's accompanied alongside freshman tennis player Clay Thompson, who is number third ranked in the class of 2010. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. us. And coach, what is the men's tennis team looking forward to right now? We are actually at the very end of the season. We just uh, heard our draw yesterday, NCAA draw. So this is the fun, fun part, but no mistakes allowed anymore. And this is what we are all excited about. And, uh, you know, we'll find out in, in one week. As she mentioned, you were also an athlete here and a student here. Has your undergrad experience helped make you a better coach? Can you connect with the players better that way? You know, I can really relate to the, to, to the different situations on the court because I lived through them and I, you know, and I played uh, individually and I played for a collegiate team, which is a little bit different always uh, in a team format. And, um, you know, I, I can really help them out when the pressure situation comes. And because I've been there and I've done that, uh, I can, you know, I, I think they trust me with my judgment and, and they go with my calls. And Clay, you're a freshman. Talk about the transition you had to make from high school to college. Well, the main transition is it's like a team environment and you have to get used to like playing, you know, relying on other people to do well as well as yourself because, you know, tennis is an independent sport. So it's just, it's incredible, you know, it's such a great atmosphere and having, you know, coaches like Chris and Billy and, and teammates to, you know, just be around with, it's, it's incredible. And it's really a fun atmosphere here. So I'm so excited to be here and couldn't be happier. And what stood out to you wanting to come to UCLA? Being in LA and just the great athletics program. I mean, it's uh, that's that was the main decisive factor. I was I just saw the Hall of Fame and I walked through it and I was like, I mean, if you want to be an athlete, this is where you have to be. I mean, this is the home of champions. So it's, and the coaches, right? Yeah, of <laughs> but even when you say that, home of championships, it honestly gives me the goosebumps because you are so right. Yeah, it's. It's really incredible you know, to see all the past names that have gone here and the history that we have behind our program. It's really something. Coach, as you mentioned, you're going into regionals and nationals, the most important part of the season right now. What are some of the key things that are going to contribute to this team's success at this point in the season? Uh, I really stay focused on, on our goal, but I think the main thing is not to look past the first round. Take one match at a time and really focus on one point at a time. And you know, you start looking too far ahead, you might you might lose your focus where, where it needs to be. So just taking it one point at a time, not thinking too far ahead, not you know, not being too too confident, but uh, but certainly you know, go the, go to the matches with with confidence, you know, necessary to win one match at a time. And what are some of the training that you guys are currently doing? Uh, you know, not too heavy lifting and running. Just just going through the through the strokes, uh, playing a lot of points, as we are gonna play a lot of matches in a row. But tr trying you know to, to 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 mainly stay in the match match shape. Clay, can you tell us a little bit about what the team does to promote camaraderie between the players? Hmm, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's really like, I mean, it just is created because we're working so hard together every day. I mean, that's that's the main you know sense of it. It's just you kind of bond with the guys that you're pouring your heart and soul out on the court every day. It's like you know, you it's just like creates a you know a bond between you guys. And so, I mean, I think that's really the main thing. And off the court, you know, we're all great friends, obviously, but it's it's on the court what really matters, and that's what brings us together as a team. And, I mean, obviously, we like to celebrate off the court and, you know, have fun, but it's, you know, mainly business. <laughs> you guys had a close win against Pepperdine. Can you guys talk a little bit about your victory? And let's get both perspective, a player and a coach. Let's start with you, Coach. Yeah, that was a big, big win for us and very necessary to maintain a high ranking, and we were really pumped up for it, especially that Clay was close to being a Pe Pepperdine player. Yeah. So he was extra motivated to prove that he made the right decision and stayed as a yeah. Bruin. And uh, yeah, I thought we, we fought really our hearts out and we played amazing tennis and uh, 
and I was really proud of the of the of the team, and really, you know, and set the tone for the rest of the remaining of the season. So I'm really excited going to the NCAs because we are playing our best tennis right now. Definitely. And I mean, you, Clay? Yeah, that Pepperdine match was really the start of like a great streak for us, and we, you know, it was a huge confidence builder. And yeah, as he said, I was actually verbally committed to Pepperdine in ninth and tenth grade, and so a little, you know, bad blood went down between that time, and you know, some harsh things were <laughs> exchanged. So I was definitely, I came in there with a little chip on my shoulder, ready to you know, make a point and prove that I made the right decision. So. Also, the last match of your regular home season was, or excuse me, of your regular season was against USC. How did that deal with pressure? Was there extra pressure because it was the last game or just because it's USC, the rivals? Probably because it was USC. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's the big thing. Uh, we, we, we obviously wanted to end the season strong and really prove a point that we could play with the top teams in the country. Uh, but, you know, whenever you get a chance to play USC at UCLA, it's a huge deal. <laughs> no matter what the rankings are, no matter what's happening around it, it's just it's the best rivalry in sports almost. So. Obviously, we would, you know, we would want to win the match, and it was as close as, as it gets to winning. But uh, I think we finished, even though we lost, everybody was really happy with, our, with the performance, and we were... You know, one with one of the best teams in the country we were so close, and we could have won. We had chances, and that proves the point that we are ready to battle with the best teams. And if we take it one one match at a time, we can really go far. And coach, you know, again, you you went here, you brought back a title in 2005. Have you seen any changes in the uh, program? Uh, we get much more uh, uh, local kids like uh, Clay and Daniel Kosakowski freshman from California. We have, uh, we have some other coming in soon. And uh, it, it changed a little bit from the times when I played. There were much many more, a little bit older foreigners. So it, it's, it's, it's different dynamics. And uh, it's a learning process for me, too. I have to make an adjustment. We have younger kids that, that you know, need to be a little bit taught in a different way. But it's, it's fun. I mean, these, these kids are surprisingly amazing you know we have three freshmen on the, in the lineup like unlike uh, last year and then they all st stepped up to the play and and we have really good results clay going back to the sc game for just another moment mm -hmm. it's true that the team it was a close game close match excuse me four to three but you personally had a big win over number 38 trojan daniel and how does it feel for you to have such a big win under your belt as just a freshman uh, that was a really incredible match because, you know, I was, again, I was really excited, you know, big crowd, big rivalry, so I really wanted to come out and prove a point, and, you know, I came out there, played one of the, probably the best match all season, and, you know, I really was feeling the energy of the crowd behind me, and it was definitely the best match I've played here so far, and really was happy, and, uh, yeah, I was hoping it would translate to the rest of the team. We had Amit Imbar come up with a huge win over uh, rival Yak Poldma. And so it really looked like we might, you know, just be able to slide by and take it and really pull up a big upset. But it's too bad in the end. I think the 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 formula with Clay is the bigger the crowd, <laughs> uh, the better he plays. So please uh, come support the yeah. Bruins yeah, in our original matches. More more show I can put on. <laughs> Speaking of that energy, how are you going to use what you've experienced and put yourself in that emotional state so you can do well in the postseason? Well, NCAA is just the whole different. It's it's like the atmosphere is just like so serious, and everyone is just so crazy. So I'm so you know so excited to really pull out you know best tennis there, and I'm hoping that it's you know yet to come. I'm hoping that the USC match is just a stepping stone to what can be a good playoff run for us. And what are you thinking when you're out there on the court? That's always a question I've liked I wish to I could tell you. <laughs> I mean, are you thinking about your opponent, more strategy? What goes in your head? Are you just being fueled by the crowd? I mean, if, if Chris could tell you from sitting on a court with me, it's, uh, I'm sure he probably wonders what goes through my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really thinking about anything. I, you know, <laughs> just... the, the, the funny thing about him is he's, he's having a lot of fun out there. So he does crazy things that I'm surprised by, and, and that relax, relax me. So I can see why he why he's playing his best tennis because he can find a good, you know, fine line between him being too, not being too serious and, 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 and kind of staying relaxed. So that's when he plays the best tennis, when he's, when he's having fun on the court. And it sometimes just causes ridiculous situations, but it works, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I just enjoy it. I mean, it's, the more fun it is, the better. And that's, you know. Nevertheless, he's a great competitor. When it comes yeah. to the crunch time, he really picks, it, picks up his game and, and 
that's why his his best results come in big matches, right? Definitely want to win. <laughs> Speaking of big time and big matches, recently the team traveled to Pac-10 Championships. Can you please describe that experience a little bit for you as a freshman, really your first time being out there and as coach? Well, it's also a high school tournament and a men's open, so I've, I've been around the atmosphere before and it's, you know, great. I, I, love seeing, I love seeing all my past, you know, people I've looked up to in college play there. And to be one of those players now and playing in front of that crowd is pretty incredible. Um, Ojai is an amazing place. Absolutely amazing place, and they really know how to throw a tournament and put on a tournament, and so I was really honored to get the chance to play there. What are some of your, your goals as a team and personal? We'll start with you, Clay. I mean, as a team, we could, we could definitely win a championship. We're such a talented team. It's just we're, full, we're a lot of freshmen, but we're led by some great seniors that really, really want to win. I mean, we have Amit Imbar, who's there's no one that wants to win more than him. And then we have Holden, who's just been an incredible player for us and great teammate. And I think when the playoffs come around, he's going to really show some fire to win, too. And I think the sky's the limit for this team, honestly. It's, it's a good mix. Personal? First Polish assistant coach to win the NCAA title. <laughs> no way. And, it'll uh, be, and it'll be something different because uh, you've done it as a student. And, yeah, it'll uh, be fun to add another ring, you know? To, to my collection. <laughs> Another it's, bling bling sparkle. <laughs> it, seems, it, it seems like it's been forever since the 2005, so it would be good to refresh those memories. Sure. Pinky ring? We can decide on that later. We can decide on that later, yeah, but you know, that'll be that just, just amazing experience, and I, would, I wish, wish it for everybody, but especially for my, my players who work hard every day. Well, we wish you both the best of luck and uh, Go Bruins. Go Bruins. Go Bruins. Thank Bruins. you very much for having Thanks us. So yeah, thank you so thank much. You. And to you guys at home, if you'd like additional information on UCLA athletics, you can visit us at uclabruins.com. I'm Javrina Safrai alongside Naomi Manea. And we are so happy that you could join us today. Thank you so much.